Hi guys, in today's video you're gonna be writing to work with me. So my apologies ahead of time because of the lighting. Right now it looks okay, but it's very sunny today, so the sun is like right on my face. I actually enjoy these kind of videos. I like when people are, are talking about random things, so I wanted to do my own version. I don't typically try to work myself in our household, which is just my boyfriend and I. We only have currently one car. We don't work in the same area, however, uh, we designed a plan where he drops me off in the morning and then I take the bus back home. After he drops me off, he of course goes to his work and then comes back home on his own. Um, it just worked out that way because for me, I don't have set hours that I have to be at work, while for him, he does. The reason why I'm driving today is because uh, he does go on a lot of trips for work. So today is one of those days where he had to go on a trip, I believe, to Kentucky. So he left really early today. He's not coming back until Friday. Today's Monday, so I have the whole week to drive the car. That means I don't have to take the bus. It's a little bit less of a hassle. I don't mind taking the bus, in all honesty. I really thought it would be a bigger struggle than what it actually is. I think right now what's starting to get a little bit not as comfortable is the heat. I'm pretty sure everybody knows that Los Angeles gets super hot. Uh, last week we were in, in, like nearly 100 degrees every day. It's getting a little bit harder to wait for the bus because being in the bus itself, they do turn on the AC and it's fine in there. Sometimes it gets even a little bit too cold. But when you're waiting at the bus station, it gets a little bit too hot. What I typically would do when I'm going to work and I'm driving, I just listen to NPR. It's pretty much public radio. I really like it. I feel like it keeps me updated with what's going on in the country, in the world, politics. So it's very informative and it seems like it's very unbiased, which is what I really like. I I think it's good to hear both sides of every story and there's multiple sides especially in a country like ours where there's a lot of different people with different opinions and it's good to respect each other's opinions I don't think one side is always right and one side is always wrong and you could take a little bit of everybody's opinions and maybe make a better opinion for yourself instead of sticking to just one side. I know a lot of people treat political parties almost as sports teams where nobody can say anything about the political party that you belong to. Or I don't think that's how it should be. I think with political parties you really should take them with a grain of salt. You shouldn't think that whatever one side says is the ultimate truth. You should be, everybody should be open to listening to different perspectives. I think a topical conversation that I wanted to bring up is routines and sticking to them as well as goals that you have set for yourself. It is hard, at least for me, it's hard to stick to a routine. For example, I've been doing, or I am doing 21 days of a specific task that I wanna add to my routine. I wanted to make sure that I wash all my dishes the night before, so when I wake up the next morning, everything is washed and there's not too much clutter in the kitchen. I don't like washing dishes in general, so I knew that it wasn't gonna be the easiest thing to do. I did stick to still washing the dishes even after the 21 days were over. So I was thinking, hey, maybe this kind of work, I am sticking to the routine that I set for myself. However, for the past three days or maybe four, I haven't been doing that. I've been letting the dishes pile up. So of course, that's a little bit discouraging. Yesterday, I did wash the dishes before going to bed and it was a lot of them. It was very, very late at night and I was trying to film my video earlier that day. So I filmed my video around seven after I took a shower. I had to do a lot of retakes because sometimes for some reason I forget a lot of words or I don't know what I'm trying to say. So it takes a little bit longer than I wish a video would take to film. And then I have to of course edit it, which I don't do any crazy editing because I'm nowhere near to you know someone who 
really knows how to edit really well. I use the very basics and I'm learning a little bit more every time I edit a new video. But it's still, it took me about three hours or so to finish the editing. It was pretty late by the time I finished because I had to also edit a thumbnail for the video. I had to edit the video description, upload it to YouTube, schedule it for a certain time. My boyfriend really hates when the kitchen is dirty. And it's not like he's the kind of person who will say, oh, I hate when kitchens are dirty, but he doesn't do anything about it. Many times he will go ahead and clean the kitchen himself. Especially if I cook, he tries to do that part himself, which I'm very thankful for. However, yesterday it was pretty late and I noticed that he was just staring at the kitchen and how dirty it was because it was pretty messy. I made pasta and I made some other things and he always says that I'm a very messy cook and I have to agree with him. When I cook, everything is everywhere. But I thought yesterday I tried to make it not as messy as usual, but I guess I, I failed because it did look pretty messy. I kind of thought that because I was filming the video and, and because I had cooked earlier that day, he was going to offer to wash the dishes, but he didn't. And it's totally understandable why. He was also doing the laundry already and he was packing for his trip today. And I'm pretty sure he was tired as well. He was just staying up to maybe keep me company so that we can go to bed at the same time. I mean, when I noticed that he was just staring at, at the dishes in the kitchen, I told him, oh, it's okay, I'll wash the dishes so that he doesn't, you know, get annoyed by it. And I thought he was gonna be like, oh, it's okay, I'll do them since you cook. But he didn't. So then when it was actually time for me to wash the dishes, I was like a little bit <laughs> not so happy. So I, don't, I didn't say anything. I washed the dishes, but I wasn't doing it in the most quiet way I guess because I was a little bit not happy doing them but sometimes I think I need to work on doing that like being passive-aggressive like if I offer it should be because I am trying to actually do them not because I'm hoping that somebody else will offer to do them to do something instead I don't know if any girls are watching and you guys ever do that with your boyfriends if, if you guys want him to do something instead of you doing it then maybe you can ask him or maybe just not offer to do it if you really don't want to do it I think little things like this we can work on trying to be a little bit better and going back to like sticking to routines when I miss even one day of a routine or a goal that I set myself up for it's very hard for me to go back to it. If I tell myself I'm gonna go to the gym every day for a month and then I miss one day, then I tell myself, okay, well, I'm not even gonna try anymore because I already fail at this. Failing one day at something or not doing it for one day is not really going to make that much of a difference if you really think about it. But that's only if you go back to the routine that you set yourself up for right away, which is something that I tell myself, but it's very hard to actually do it. At least for washing the dishes, I felt like I had a deadline in mind. I think if you're someone who's sticking to routines becomes difficult, then having a short-term goal, it can be very helpful. At least for me, it was. I heard somewhere that 21 days is usually how long it takes for you to stick to a routine. So like I mentioned, I've stopped doing the routine that I had been doing for probably a month. Every day is a new day, so I'm gonna keep doing it today or that's my plan. I made myself do a couple of other routines that I wanted to stick to. So the four routines that I was trying to stick to were washing the dishes every night, doing my skincare routine every morning and night all the way through, not eating sugar, and the one before the not eating sugar one was to not drink any drinks with sugar only. So I was still able to eat some sweets like that were solid. And I think that was just so that I can ease into it. I feel like I'm very addicted to sugar. Like I have to have sugar at a certain time every day, which is not good. And I am trying to lose a little bit of weight. Um, that's another topic. But anyways, guys, I just got to work. I hope that this was somehow of an enjoyable video. I'm probably gonna edit it a lot because I am rambling for a lot of times. I'll see you later. Hopefully you guys have a great day as well. Bye. One eternity later.
back to my channel. So I'm back, I just got off work and I'm driving home right now. I think the only thing I have to do really quick is go to the post office to drop off some mail. But other than that, I'm just ready to go home and not do much. But today was a really, really long day. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I actually work at a cosmetics company here in Los Angeles. Um, I got a promotion around two, two or three months ago, I would say. Transitioning from one position to another can be a little bit difficult, especially in my situation. I had to wait until we got a replacement for my position and another person who was in my same department also quit around the same time I got promoted so we needed to find two people to cover for my position and then this other co-worker who quit. And finding somebody who was suitable it seemed like for whatever reason was very challenging. Um, we hired two people and one of them quit after only one week. They didn't really say why they quit, but then I heard um, that they just were too stressed out. Even though they only were there for a couple of days, they still felt very stressed out about the position and like the amount of work that they needed to do. The other girl who took uh, the other position where, that I used to have, unfortunately, it seems like she was having a little bit of trouble when it came to the new training that she needed to go through. Unfortunately, this girl who was hired, I think she's a cool girl. I wanted her to succeed just mainly because she was hired from our warehouse department. So for her to go from the warehouse to the main office and then already have so much responsibility, I'm happy for her. I know she has kids, so I'm pretty sure her family was happy to hear about the promotion. And I want her to learn, I want her to better herself. But at the same time, there have been some signs where I feel like she doesn't take the job as seriously as she should. I don't think there's a problem with somebody not knowing a certain process or a certain way of doing things because I was in that exact position not that long ago. I just started in this company nine months ago now. So I was getting used to a, a complete new system, a complete new set of rules. And I still was able to get used to the workload and really immerse myself and know that I was doing a good job. And the only way of doing things is by taking things really seriously, paying attention, taking good notes. I think no matter how long you've been working, you have to show at least that you are putting on the effort. Sometimes little things, it does tell you if somebody is taking things seriously or not. Like for example, I, I think I'm very passive when it comes to being an authoritative figure. I mean, I was basically training her, but there were times when she, there were, a handful of times when she would answer her phone while I was training her. So maybe one time or two times it's fine because I know she has kids and maybe she was getting a text from them. It's totally fine. But the thing is that I think I trained her about six times and out of those six times, five times she looked at her phone. You know how if you had the phone on, on the lock screen, you can still see some text. So she would do that and sometimes she would even go as far as like actually answering the text. And she would never say, oh, excuse me, this is what's happening. I need to get this. Nothing like that. She would just do it. And perhaps, she, maybe she just doesn't see me as somebody who is supposed to be teaching her, but at the same time, who she's supposed to be a little bit more watchful as to what she does. Because I haven't told this to anybody, but I could easily be telling our boss that she's not really taking things seriously. I think it would be one thing if she would still do a good job even though maybe she's not taking that good notes or maybe she does kind of get distracted easily but if she still managed to do her job then i wouldn't have a problem at all 
So we ended up hiring somebody else for the second position. Um, she's getting trained and she does seem to be way better than this other girl who we hired from the warehouse. But I mean, I like both of them. So I hope that the both of them stay and they grow within the company. I for sure was very happy to get a promotion even though it's a lot more stress and a lot more work. It still feels good to be recognized for the work that you're doing. It's just a matter of working together. I think in every company there's always going to be all kinds of people. I'm actually lucky to be in the company that I'm in. I always wanted to work with cosmetics and I started taking my job search very very seriously maybe like around two years ago and it took a while for me to finally even find a position available within the cosmetic industry even though you would think that in Los Angeles you probably can find a lot more opportunities but it's not really the case there are a lot of companies but they're spread out all over the city some of the places where these brands are located are just way too far from where I live I even did consider some of these really far away companies but then just getting through the application process or even waiting for an opening to be available it's kind of hard so of course I'm very thankful to be able to work for this company my boss is great most of my co-workers are very nice let me know if you want me to make a video about job search and breaking into the beauty industry because I am pretty sure a lot of girls would love to work in a makeup company just as a heads up though if you want to work for a beauty company just know that it's not as glamorous as you might think it would be um, it's a lot of work it's a lot of new terms new processes new way of looking at things and of course it will depend on the department that you end up working at if you're a recent grad I would really I think it would be very helpful to just start within any position that's similar to what you want to do within the industry that you're interested in because once you are in the industry it's way easier to get other similar jobs people value nowadays work experience more than anything else because unfortunately in school they don't really teach you everything that's actually realistic in the workforce so that's why it's also really important to do internships while you can I didn't do any internships and on top of that I really was lost as to what I wanted to do with my life I wasn't sure where I wanted to work what was my dream position what kind of industry I wanted to work for um, and I think having those kind of questions are very valid and are very normal to have because you're making a decision pretty much for the rest of your life so having questions having doubts is absolutely normal at least for me it was kudos to the people who from the very beginning know what they want to do and go for it because it really saves you a lot of heartache and just struggles through life i think for me it's a little bit tricky i think it's pretty obvious that i wasn't born in the united states i actually moved here when i was around 14 years old and nobody from my family or nobody from my nearby family really knew anything about the system here when it comes to college. I had to learn everything on my own and unfortunately by the time I understood how some of this and unfortunately by the time I understood how all of this works it was a little bit too late. I had already made a lot of mistakes. I had not taken high school as seriously as I should have. I missed a lot a lot of classes while I was visiting my dad and I didn't really think much of it. My SAT score I'm pretty sure was horrible because I didn't even once glance at what an SAT score was, what it was for, how to prepare for it or like to even review for it. Like I didn't do any of that and I think that like seriously affected my application process at the end.
because obviously if they're looking at the SAT score and grades to determine where you're going to school, I didn't have either one. I didn't have good grades and I didn't have a good SAT score. All I knew is that I really wanted to go to college. Believe it or not, it sounds like I would be the last person who wanted to go to college because I didn't take anything seriously. But in my mind, all I knew was that I wanted to go to college and that, that was something that my parents expected from me and that I expected from myself. So I just went ahead and went. And I went with no plan. And I went to the first, one of the only schools that accepted me with the type of grades that I had. And I chose the one major that I thought kind of fit me. I enjoyed the classes, so I was like, okay, maybe I should graduate in that major. Of course, now I know that choosing a major is one of the most important things that you can do while you're in college. I didn't really take it that seriously, so I ended up wasting two extra years in college, gathering more debt for myself, and ending up with a major that I didn't really know what to do after I graduated. Of course, I was happy I graduated, but now that I think about it, I would have done things way differently. But I think that even if you're not an immigrant, or even if you have the family or the resources that let you know how to go about the process, it's really hard to figure out what you want to do with the rest of your life at 17, 18. It's very daunting. Like for me, I just knew that I wanted to do something that my parents would be proud of and something that I thought society would respect me for. My dad is a computer engineer, so I applied to be part of the computer science program. But very soon I learned that that was not the thing for me. It wasn't my forte. I think a lot of people would do things differently if they could do things all over again. But unfortunately that's not how life is. You have to learn to make the best of what you already have instead of always thinking about what you could have had or what you missed out on. Okay, so I just got here to the post office. I'm gonna drop off some mail. I'll be right back. A few moments later. Okay, so I'm done with that. I don't think there has there's anything else for me to do as far as errands. So I'm just gonna head home. Yeah, I've been having like the craziest dreams lately. Uh, I think the last one was like a, a, a legit nightmare combined with the most random common day that I could have during the dream. Just thinking about my dream makes my heart like feel tight. I think more than scary, it was just very disturbing. Um, I don't even want to talk about it because I think if I start remembering all the details, I'm I'm not gonna feel good. I don't know about you guys, but I personally don't really think dreams mean anything. I have my very good friend she really believes that dreams are trying to tell you something which is kind of okay i don't mind looking up some parts of my dream online just to kind of see what maybe could mean for some people but i don't really take it seriously i know my mom also thinks that dreams mean something like somebody might die somebody's gonna get pregnant somebody's gonna get sick so it's so all these hidden meanings behind dreams i have like some of the weirdest most disturbing dreams sometimes and i don't think it really means anything i think that it mainly is when i watch something that's a little bit off like maybe i watch a horror movie or i don't know something got stuck in my head from thinking about a certain topic and my brain kind of distorts that image that i had for some reason or another it's not all the time thank god there are times when i just have weird dreams but not in a bad way it's just like very random dreams that i have but i just don't like it when i have like the very disturbing type of dreams because it just doesn't make me feel that good but anyways guys i'm back home now so i'm just gonna head in there try to film some videos try to have a productive afternoon and yeah i'll see you guys in my next video